Kleaza, thanks again for talking to us. You and I were previously members of the Johannesburg Society of Advocates, which is a constituent bar of the General Council of the Bar. While we were there, I belonged to the Dumanogwe group of advocates. You were in island group at some, or, point, at some point when you came to the bar. You then were instrumental in forming another group called the Victoria Mklenge group. Yeah. Can you Tell us what the impetus for that was. You know, really, I, I, when I came to the bar uh, and I stayed and watched the profession, right, and sort of got disappointed a little about lawyers, as you said, lawyers mm. work on evidence and mm. they fact based, but I saw prejudice. <laughs> mm. I saw lawyers who believe in things that have nothing to do with facts who believe that you and me are inferior, and I mm. watched it. And so it was a constant battle for me to say, why is it that wherever black people are, they have to beg, black people and women, they have to beg for recognition, for survival, just mere survival. And so within the context of the Jobe Bar, I had been like you on the Bar Council at some point, and and I kept getting involved in initiatives that would turn the Jobe Bar into a place that is completely transformed, uh, not where black people and women are accommodated, where they are the norm. Mm. And when that became difficult, and we created Victoria Mkanga in order to create that space, you guys had just formed Dumanogwe. So we're not doing something that was new, right? And we were trying to, to, to form a pattern, and which is why we went to the same building where you were. Mm -hmm. let's, let's expand this, uh, these groups where people of all races and of all sexes are comfortable, are not beggars, mm -hmm. are not wanting transformation. They are there. And so the VM group was started by a few of us, myself, um, Nez, uh, uh, sorry, um, uh, Azar, Bam, Matthew Chaskelson, Stephen, and a couple mm. of us, many. And it was to create a space where we, we could, at least there where we were, be comfortable about the values that we, we wanted to live. Because I believe you can't preach the values you don't live. Mm. And so I've always said to people, let's form a place where we don't have to tell white people what to be. Mm. Let them be what they want to be and what they've always wanted to be. Let's form a place where we can be the examples of what we want a human being in a non-racial, non-sexist country should be. Mm. And that's, what, that's why we formed it. But of course, it was still operating within the bar council the Joburg, and these are structures that just are not yours, mm -hmm. you know, and, 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 and I've always believed, that's why I'm unhappy with the political settlement in South Africa, I've never believed you can reform a violent, oppressive system that believes others are inferior. Mm -hmm. I don't, I think you must end it, you must not reform it. And so, having stayed there, a lot of us started discussions, you were there and many others were there, to say, for how long are those who want a new equal dispensation going to beg others, right? We want to be, please accommodate us, please. Why can't, why don't we have the confidence to build what's ours and leave this place that was created for colonial and apartheid uh, uh, mm. intentions. Let's create a place, it may not be perfect, a place where, which practices law differently. Mm. And so, Pabasa, and by the way, congratulations and thank you for your election as our national treasurer of Pabasa on Saturday. Ooh, now you've told the world uh, <laughs> of where to come for money. It's not my money, it's and, the members' money. And, and, and so, over time, a group of us, Pabasa mm. was born out of a meeting of many people. I know not many came when uh, the crunch 
time came. Mm. But that people like you, me, and others had reached a point where let's form a place we don't have money, mm. right? But we have ourselves. Let's form a place that we can call ours, as imperfect as it will be. And let's start a school, first of its kind. And let's reverse the legacy that we can't take control of our lives. And for as long as we live, we seek white validation, white approval. We, need, we seek accommodation. We need self-determination. And you get that when you believe in yourself and you don't trouble the ones you've been fighting with. And we created Papasa as a place where we don't have to fight with anybody. Mm. And it's a place that I believe in future uh, is going to be the home of all South Africans who are lawyers, black and white, men and women, who believe in genuine, genuine non-racism. And I don't call it non-racialism deliberately. Mm -hmm. Non-racism mm -hmm. and, and equality of human beings with no one uh, regarded as inferior. What is the distinction between non-racialism and non-racism? <laughs> I think this concept of non-racialism for me has has become a notion that, that is the equivalent of multiracialism. People live side by side, uh, black and white, but actually the black ones are still treated badly. I, th I think for me non-racism is a system in which you constantly defeat, kick out the practice of racism. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, because this notion of non racialism has disappointed me, uh, because it, 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 it's founded on a belief, particularly in South Africa, that reconciliation right, is something mm -hmm. black people must do. Mm -hmm. Break their backs, bending over backwards to accommodate people who oppress them. Mm -hmm. Right? And I think that notion of peace, of non-racialism, of harmony that is based on the suppression of the historically oppressed just doesn't appeal to me. Mm -hmm. And I believe we must confront the fact that people who are black do not have equal opportunities in life mm -hmm. for as long as they've lived. Okay. We've had our first intake of pupils here in 2020, going through uh, our school, our Pius Langer School of Advocacy. What has been your impression of the caliber that has come out? We, you and I have marked some of the scripts, yeah. um, but generally, what, what has been your impression of the caliber of pupils that we've had this year? You know, first of all, I, I was impressed by the fact that we attracted people who just by virtue of coming here, had gone over the hurdle that something that is created by people who are black is inferior. Mm. We, create, we got a caliber of people who were prepared to come here because they believed in what we were doing and they believed in themselves. Whether or not they were great lawyers, for me, that is an important element for a person who's going to be a successful professional. Mm. We got those types and they came here. But you and me have taught them. And I think we got it right. We didn't take 200 people that applied, mm -hmm. and all of them, I commend them for applying. But the school has been a great experience because it's the first school, by the way, of its kind for advocates. Mm -hmm. And it's been great to see that with very, very limited resources, no one gave us money, Nadell did, and the LPC gave us a large chunk, but we went to many people. No one wanted to give it a chance because this is something that they don't believe would succeed, would collapse in six months. It's been 30 months. Mm. And I think the school has produced lawyers, as we will see when the results come out, mm. of, I think, the highest quality. And for me, that is an example that we must continue to believe in ourselves. Mm. And because we... We undermine ourselves when we believe we can remain in the shadows of those who control the knowledge systems, who control uh, the profession and capital. Mm. And I think for me, the example for what we did in the school 
is that black people and all of those South Africans who believe in the future, in the non-racist future, do not need the approval of anybody to start something successful. Mm. I understand we've also been approached, is it by the LPC to train attorneys as well in the school? Absolutely. From the day we, the time we gave the LPC our curriculum, mm. um, which they accredited, we've had this discussion with Nadel, we've had this discussion with the LPC to say, what can we do to expand uh, our horizons and mm. our reach so that we can actually uh, train attorneys and mm. different, because that's important as well. It's an access to justice issue. Because we must recognize that this split, which is necessary, that there are attorneys and there are advocates, but we need a unified profession mm -hmm. so that they are, we, everyone people go to who's trained by us mm. can, can help give them quality legal services. Mm. And for me, that is the, the, the objective of, this, of our school. That is a hell of a confidence booster, a vote of confidence in, in the school. Uh, I, I understand also at the AGM there were some suggestions that uh, Pabasa should also train aspirant judges. <laughs> yeah, people, people have become bolsterous mm. and ambitious, but it's very important. We recently had a, a call from the, the study group in Parliament of the ANC, mm. and we had a, a very good discussion about the future of this country and justice and the future of law. Mm -hmm. That on its own, that in 30 months, ridiculed by so many people, starting something that is challenging a system that is bigger than all of us, that's been hostile to us for all of these years. We've been able to create space for ourselves to be recognized, to fight and have confidence to fight for our existence first. Mm, mm. And I think that has been recognized by many people, even those who dislike what we did. Mm. And I think the, the fact that a lot of them dislike us makes me happy because it means when you confront a system that has monopolized the discourse, that has affected society f for, for so long, you must know you're going to create enemies. Mm. And those enemies may be some of your own people. And your job as a leader is to understand the psychology of oppression mm -hmm. and that some of your opponents are your opponents not because they hate you, but because they are victim of the system you've started to confront. Mm -hmm. Okay, on that note, I would, I would like us to go to the next segment and talk about a more controversial subject. Um, we'll touch on those aspects where you, which you can talk about, um, and that is the Skakane report.